When being asked to write a summary, it can be a little overwhelming to decide what parts you need to include and what parts should you leave out. Some of the things to consider are what writing prompt are you being asked to summarize? So in the example we'll use for this, it's going to be why is Eastern Washington so good for farming? So I'm going to find an article that relates to that and make sure that I'm only focusing on details that directly answer that explanation. So when I did an initial search, I found this article from historylink.org, Agriculture in Washington from 1792 to 1900, and it's by Kara Rowe. So what I'm going to do is start with making sure I know my article and my author because these are elements I should include in my summary. So my article is Agriculture in Washington, 1792 to 1900. So I'll go Agriculture in Washington, 1792 to 1900 by Kara Rowe. All right, so we need the title and the author. Then we want to identify other elements. So these are usually the question words, who, what, when, where, why, how. Now we might not be able to address all of these, but we can at least address some of them that will give us a substantial enough um, outlook to be able to give an overall explanation of this writing prompt. So why is Eastern Washington so good for farming? Now, I have already read through this a little bit, and this is what you'll need to do, just kind of skimming through what applies to what you're interested or not. Something I noticed up here is that by the 1840s, more US citizens were moving to the area and establishing farms. Wheat, apple, potatoes, grapes, sheep, and cattle were early commodities raised. On the east side of the state, ranchers used free range practices on the, very, the vast prairies and crop farmers broke sod on the lush grasslands. So we can say that, you know, lush grasslands. So as far as who, okay, so we say early, so settlers in Washington, or we can say farmers in Washington, settlers, now modern farmers in Washington. Okay, so it involves them, who, and and farming in eastern Washington, okay? So what do we know about it, okay? Uh, oh, another element that we can do is we know the when. So as early as 1792, based on this article, because that's when people start came to, coming to the state, as early as 1792, but increasing dramatically by 1840s, okay? Because uh, that's when a lot of people were coming in. Where, and we'll say east of the Cascade Range in Washington, okay? What was it? Okay, so uh, the, the why. Okay, so why was there this increase? And so this is gonna go more towards explaining the um, why it's, it's so pro ag agriculturally productive. So we're gonna go back to our article and kind of look at this. So it says, agriculturally, Washington is divided into two sections by the Cascade Mountains. The west side of the state uh, has a wet coastal climate. The eastern side of the state is dry with a more desert-like climate. While the weather varies year to year, patterns of rain, sunshine, and heat make both sides of the state well-suited for growing various crops and raising herd animals. Okay, so far, it's just kind of giving a general statement of east and west. It's not giving me anything specific, so I don't need to write any of these elements, okay? Washington soil history can be be also be divided north to south. The northern half was covered by glaciers that did not finish retreating until about 10,000 years ago, and so has younger soil than the southern half, of which glaciers did not extend. So I'm like, oh, that's interesting, so why? Okay, glaciers covered the northern half until 10,000, uh, helps, 10, <laughs> 10,000 years ago, making the soil fresh and rich. Rich, okay? And we'll fix our spelling there. I love Grammarly. 
And then it says, much of the state holds volcanic ash deposits within its soil from the eruption of volcanoes in the region throughout the ages. Okay, so you can also say that uh, volcanic ash deposits have helped make fertile soil ideal for crops. Various climates. Okay, the various climates, reasons, geology, and age of the soil make Washington home to 12 different soil types. This diverse soil makeup helps Washington farmers grow more than 300 different crops and makes the state a haven for livestock. Well, we're not so much worried about livestock, but we can say um, uh, these conditions create soil diversity. and allow for a large range of crops. Okay, I'd also read something about lush grassland up above. So that means you're not dealing with a lot of forested land. This is going to be open, flat land, which is easier for pushing plows and, and cultivating the land. You know, if you have steep mountains and trees, that's fine for cattle, uh, but it's not very good if you're trying to plow. So we can also say the flat topography makes farming techniques more suitable. Land can be plowed, uh, tilled, and uh, we'll say planted more easily than steep forested terrain. Okay, so that really helps me understand the difference in Eastern and Western uh, agricultural practices. So, and that's, there's not really gonna be a how or a what. So what I'm gonna do is turn these different elements into a paragraph. So I'm gonna start with is identifying the article and the author. So I would say, uh, the article, Agriculture in Washington, 1792 to 1900, by Kara Rowe, gives, a, uh, gives an overview of why Eastern farming is uh, so productive in Washington. And I might want to change that a little bit, but I've made the key element, which is I've cited, I've credited my source for the information I've gathered, okay? Settlers and modern farmers have been able to take advantage of the soil and terrain the eastern Uh, soil and terrain, Eastern Washington offers. Okay, so in a, um, the soil is fertile because uh, glaciers kept the land protected until 10,000 years ago. Additionally, volcanic deposits provided the soil with rich minerals uh, used by crops, or needed by crops, rich minerals needed for lush crops. Okay. Um, the, and so I, I give the explanations of what has led to the diversity and so what's the overall impact, okay? Uh, so we can say, uh, we wanted to talk about the rich, okay, so the diverse 
soil conditions allows for the hundreds of crops grown in the state. Um, I'm not a huge fan of that last sentence, so you want to revise this, but this is at least an overall idea. I took this big article, took key components out of different paragraphs, and I was able to make it my overall impact statement. Why is Eastern Washington so good for farming? So this is what you need to do. Identify your ar article title and your author, and just try to find the details of the who, what, when, where, why, how. Again, they might not always apply, but at least at least gives you an ideal starting point. If the details you're including doesn't directly go to answering your writing prompt, then it's not important and not necessary. It might be super interesting, but your job in creating a summary is filtering out relevant and, and irrelevant information.